What's up guys, today I have a video on the new season playing Nocturne in a challenger game. All the icons are diamond because obviously it's the start of the season. And so this game, I wanted to, this game I wanted to show how to play smart puff situation, I guess. I do pretty good this game individually, but what happens is that the enemy jungler also does pretty good. So when you're playing jungle, the higher you go, the more you're going to have to think about to what side of the map are you're gonna play and you know put your resources in and so this game i just figured i would path top lane because i have viper who's a really good player they were ghosting him this game so they banned his vein and his riven so he picked rise and i think rise is actually a really strong champion right now he scales pretty hard his items didn't get nerfed that hard and he's just a beast in the late game and then the bot lane we have Kogma Brom. I guess I think Kaisa Rel. So they have Kaisa Rel plus Volley Bear. And we have Nocturne Brom Kogma, which to me sounds like we don't win the 3v3 early game. Maybe when I'm level 6, I can make something happen with Brom passive. I can just jump on them and stun them. But before then, I'm a little scared of Balin, so I decided to path up. You're playing Nocturne, you try to always queue towards your next camp, your final queue. Just to make you a little bit faster. So right now, I'm not really doing much. I just know that I want to full clear and play for my level 6. You should try to put your camera towards the fight a little earlier than I did here then you could see summoner spells but most of the time people in my elo will ping summoner spells like my rise pink darius flash ghost so i'm already pretty happy seeing that they traded one for one here's something tricky i think i could have pinged it's pretty likely that volleybear is pathing bot because they have a winning 3v3 so i probably should have pinged Balin because i think he'll skip his final camp and gank Balin to punish them here but my Balin has to crash his wave so they end up getting caught because they overextend. It's a tough situation. Because even if I did ping, I think they would have pushed it in. Because if you just look at that wave, like they have to crash it. Uh, but I'm not sure. I'm not a Balin main, so I'm not actually sure what the correct play is. Like maybe they just should have left that last wave instead of pushing. Here I see that this Darius is all inning and he has no flash. So I go for a sneaky Q over the wall, and then I just flash. So now I'm, okay, I'm a little happier now, because my win condition just got a kill. I know he started Gromp because he ganked Valen there, so I'll ward his next Gromp. This is something that's really good to do. If you end up on the opposite side of the enemy jungler, just ward his first camp that's going to spawn. So either the Krugs or the Gromp. And then... In the next like 20 30 seconds you're gonna see where he is so here i mean i did my full clear i did a gank so i kind of need to be bot lane right now but i just can't because the tempo doesn't work out maybe if i was a better player since our bot lane needed to cr like they need to crash the wave again because the enemy team froze it maybe if i would have skipped the crab i could have helped them this is what make it becomes really awkward this game so their wave is still frozen and now my kogma died so it's not even that good for me to go bobbing like, how am i gonna push the wave myself you know but i have to so i decide in my head that i will cover bobbing and do dragon at the same time because i know that udir or i mean volley bear has to recall and go to his Gromp. Right? So, and now I see him there. So I just make this choice. I get to cover Balin on this crash. It's unfortunate that they fought before I could get there. Or maybe it's my fault because I took the crab instead of instant recalling and covering them. But we still get a dragon out of it. Because they get to crash a big wave. And I get to do dragon. But it is really interesting to look back on games like this. I... Probably, if I was a better player, 
after seeing the bat the first volleyball gank, I should have known that I might have to just give up my crab and just be there. And then if I would have counter ganked that play, maybe we would have gotten like a triple kill. But you have to deal with the situation you put yourself in, so... Now I see Volibear shows here. So I know that he is... He didn't take any of my camps. He didn't punish me. And I see that he's beelining for the Void Grubs. But I have a Rise top. Who is, like, he's Rise, but obviously he, he's recalling right now after crashing a big wave. And I see that Akali is stronger than Yon right now. So. Honestly, like, I can either full clear like I'm doing right now, or I could have invaded his Raptors. Because I, I knew he skipped his Raptors to check the dragon, and then he ran straight to the Void Grubs. Honestly. Going for his Raptors after my Raptors was probably the move. Because then I would have gotten the bottom crab as well for free. I think what I do here is I instantly recall. I plan on using my ultimate bot lane. Because I know that since he walked all the way across the map to do the... He walked all the way across the map to do the Void Grubs. His tempo is a lot slower than mine. So I know I'm getting back on the map faster than him right now. And obviously here, if she stays in my ult range, I'm just going to kill her. Nice. This is a freeze, so I'm not going to touch the wave. Very important, the higher you go, to realize when it's a freeze. I went the greedy way here, I just should not have went the greedy way. But I did not get punished. So another Volibear helps him crash. This Volibear is playing for Balling really hard. But I'm playing for myself right now. So hopefully that pays off. But this is the fun thing about jungle. You'll see, like, I think I'm a great player. But there's so many decisions throughout the game. Even when you think you're playing well. That you could have done something differently and maybe it would have gave you a better outcome. Here, I just looked bot. They got cheese ganked. We saw Volibear bot. Volibear stayed bot. Another wave's kind of bad. But I just have to keep... Like, there's nothing I can do about it. I'm too late for it anyway. Honestly, I shouldn't have... I should not have even started walking bot. Because most of the time, if a play is happening, you're already late. Unless you have some way of getting there instantly. If a play is already like happening and you have to walk for 10 to 20 seconds, early game at least, most of the time you're too late. Not a play you have to go for. You should cross map at that point. And cross mapping just means punish them on the other side of the map somehow. Or in this case, just keep doing my full clear. And now I see Volibear bot lane again. So he stayed bot lane again. So my first instinct is to go for his Gronk. I know his blue is down, but maybe I can beeline it to his Gronk. Or kill the Darius. More than likely, I'm on a ward. But I just need to get this. Get my rise even further ahead. I smited the Grump because I saw that they were fighting. Kali flashed. Right, now I already have my item. So right now, I see Rel bot, I see Braum bot. I probably should ping my Braum that I'm going through the Void Grubs. 
at this point in the game, I know that my bot side is behind and my top side is ahead. So I know that if we fought the dragon, we'd probably lose. I don't have my ult. Braum doesn't have his ult. I'm just uh, doing the void grabs. And we have TPs up, so if they dive bot lane, my solo laners can hopefully TP. But I just can't waste my time down there because it's just a losing uh losing side of the map. I'm only playing I only like to play towards the winning side of the map. No matter how much my bowling cries about it, I just have to do what I think is best for the game. So we split boy grabs three three and we split the first two dragons. They got hex deck, which is like the best dragon, but there's not much I can do about it. Now I see that uh, they're still posturing to dive bot lane. And I have my ult in 15 seconds, so... I'm ready to counter it. You know, not bad. Solid response. First thing I do is walk into their jungle. And uh, if you ever win a fight, it's good to cross over to their jungle and see if you can take anything. <laughs> I don't know how I tanked this. Volibear's in my jungle. I just wanted to cross over here because I knew these camps were both spawning. I had vision on them. It's just important to always be doing something. You'll notice this game, I did not, I've like, I've not had a lot of downtime. And while you're doing this and you're just farming like this, there's time for you to think. And as Nocturne, what you should be thinking about is your next ultimate. Thought that was a pink word. <laughs> right now, the game is in an awkward state where we just don't have a lot of pressure on the map. I just go for uh, my blue. Just grabbing the infernal cinders. Herald is spawning, so. At this point in the game, you should be asking yourself if you want to fight the Herald or not. The answer is probably no. Their strong member Kaisa just showed top, so that means that they're top side. They're playing towards the Herald. Do you want to take that fight or not? I have Yone, Kogma, and Rise. So I'm just going to keep farming. It's okay to give Heralds. Heralds are not the end of the game. And here, I think I make a really big mistake. For some reason, I thought it was okay for me to walk into this bush. I forgot about Rel completely. Very unfortunate. You gotta stay focused. All game. I lost focus there. My Yone pops off though. This is actually a crazy play from him. The Yone is actually my duo. The new mid laner for Ole Miss, potentially. If he enrolls next semester. So now, it's very unfortunate for me because I used my flash. I used my ult. I don't really have a lot to do. 
Kind of like when you're playing Lilia, you use your flash and ult. It's not much for you to do. But Dragon is spawning in 25 seconds. So, just in case we want to fight it, I'm going to push bot lane. You might ask yourself why I'm pushing bot lane. It's because no one will catch this wave. Like, nobody on my team is here for this wave. And nobody in the enemy team is here for this wave. So uh, what I can do is I can push these two waves. And they're going to crash into this tier 1 tower. And just die. And they're giving us pressure for dragon. Somebody on the enemy team has to catch those waves. Darius has catch them. So I want to start dragon now. And sometimes it's just valuable for you as a jungler to create pressure that way. You see that their bot lane is posturing top lane, so... I don't see Bali Bear, so I'm a little scared, but I think I'm safe. I see Darius here. Not like he can do anything. I don't really know what he was doing. I ult here just to, like, disrupt the enemy team. That's now the whole enemy team coming. So I ulted to make them a little confused. Ends up being a really close fight. But triple kill for Kogma. I'm happy. Rise is still just farming. It's really good. All right, so now same thing, I'm just back on the map. At this point in the game, you should try to see who's your win con. Unfortunate. I still think that Rise is our win con in terms of splitting. But like we have three scaling champions, like Yone and Kogma are both useful. So, honestly, like, the game just looks good for us. Like, we got two dragons. The fights are going even, which is good for us since we outscale them. Oh, and my ult is back up. I'm always, you'll notice, I'm, I'm always trying to put myself in a position when I have my ult to do something. In this game, I think it's really good for me to ult into my rise on the side lane to turn his 1v1 into a 1v2 or a 2v2. What that does is like I can get him I can get him a kill and time to push for free. Like he might get this tier one bot tower. Or if he's getting ganked, I can be there to counter gank it. So here, the second I see a Kali on the map, I turn around. Instead of pushing mid, I'm just gonna go dive. I got my fear off. So they know exactly where she is, and she just dies. Now we get this tier 1 tower. And then I just insta recall. Nothing for me to do here. I could check if these Krugs are up. They weren't even up. Just want to recall. Get hold breaker. Now we just wait for my ult. So I can do something again. I think my camera's a little bit low. Thankfully, they didn't take my red. Rise got another kill. So here, pause, okay? You guys want to get good at playing the mid game? If you have a strong split pusher that's splitting bot and they send their juggler bot lane plus one or two other people, that is your sign to do Baron. So just pay attention to what happens the second we see that Darius is dead 
and Volley Bear shows Balin. Everyone on our team is pinging Baron. Everyone. A lot of times, what I've noticed when I coach people in lower ranks is they won't even they wouldn't even t like think about doing Baron here because it's not a, an obvious Baron. It is an obvious Baron actually, but you know if you're not thinking about it in the way of like you know we drew pressure bot and then we get a free Baron. So now I'm, I'm covering Yon's push on this tier 1 tower while also taking camps. It's really good for me. Now I'm not sure if my Yoni is going for tier 2 tower. Oh, oh Darius just wants to die. <laughs> now we can hit this tier 2 tower for free. And then after this tower we should just invade the red buff. Oh. This actually goes terribly. That was good by the enemy team. Maybe we like overstayed our welcome. Thought we were a bit stronger than we actually were. Because Darius is weak and their Kaisa is strong, so even though we killed Darius, I, they're still able to fight us. Infernal Dragon just spawned, so his timing was really bad. Like, the fact that we, we got Baron and we can't fight the dragon really sucks for us. That's okay. You can't win them all. I found some way to punish them. Took their camps. It's important when things go badly like that to not panic and just see what you can salvage out of the play. Look at that. Our team comp is actually really strong. So now, even though I wanted to recall before that play, I see that their blue buff and Gromp are spawning, so I'm just gonna punish. Always the first thing I look for when you win a fight in the mid, mid to late game, what can you take? What can you get from the fight? Number one should be turrets. If you can get a turret, go for the turret, especially tier two turrets. Number two is camps. Kills are only useful in the mid late game if you're getting something from those kills. Getting kills just to get kills, getting no objective or no, you know, nothing that gets you ahead is just not very good. So here, I was hoping my team wouldn't greed, but they end up sieging the turret and get teleported on. Not much I can do about it. I don't have my flash, I don't have my ult. I thought about trying to take for this tier 3 tower, but Darius was coming through to respond. But even though your team is inting, it's important for you to just stay consistent and not int with them. I see this guy overextended. I should make sure I don't get collapsed on. Recall. I have 3.7k now. Just from not dying. Just playing smart. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
If you guys are wondering why I don't buy boots, uh, Agurin doesn't buy boots. I don't really, I don't know why. Maybe it's because the champion is like naturally fast. So it's more efficient and not waste your stats on it, but it felt pretty good this game. I was just trying it out. There you go. My Hecarim just, or my Braum just dies for no reason. So all we can do, see what, what, how you can punish. I just go for vision for my rise here. And this is my second big mistake of the game. Don't know what I'm doing. My bad. <laughs> I got a little tilted in the chat. What can I say? Sometimes I get tilted. But that's okay. The only thing that matters is focusing on winning the game. Now there's a chance for the team to do Baron, because I died. It's really bad to die as the jungler. Like, honestly, guys, if you can avoid dying, you'll just be a great jungler. And every death is uh, possibly a Baron for the enemy team. The Valiant Effort from Yone. He's not happy. But Ryze gets the solo kill. So at least that's something. Maybe we can fight Dragon. I should have that easy. Miss my smite easy. This is a point of the game. I'm level 16. Like, I can skip camps if my team needs me to hover. You know, doing my camps doesn't matter that much. What matters is just your positioning on the map. And taking the enemy camps. I see the enemy team is going for me. A little scared. Kind of felt like I had to defend my Kogma here. Yone has the flank. Completely misses, but that's okay. Kaisa ults on me, but she has no flash. Oh, she flashes actually. Now she has no flash. <laughs> and a cock my passive kills everyone. You can see like I, I, I kind of like games like this because a lot of times I post games where I'm stomping. But this game is kind of just... I feel like I played pretty well. Uh, but it's not like I was just stomping the enemy team. I feel like I played this game decently smart. Obviously, I made my mistakes. I got two deaths that are pretty bad. But when you're playing League of Legends, it's hard to not make a mistake. This game is pretty hard. But I feel pretty good about this performance. Like, I feel like I played well around my strengths on my team. And when you're playing well around a player like Viper, the Rise, he's just very, he's very smart and he'll know what to do with his lead. You might not be able to relate if you're uh, playing in Silver. There's not going to be many XLCS players there. But... <laughs> but it still works better if you play around the people on your team that are strong. 
always press tab. Like, my Kog'Maw is strong right now. Obviously, I still value my Rise more. He's level 18. He has like 300 CS. Uh. It's okay, they can have my red buff. We're just waiting for Rise to get pressure. Like right now, all we have to do is not die. Possibly defend top lane with Yon. Waiting for the dragon respawn. Just letting Rise farm up. I'm just hovering my Kog'Maw right now, just to keep him safe. Now Rise is mid, so I'm confident. Thinking about going on the Darius. But I don't want to throw the game going in on a Darius, you know? So I'm just waiting. Just make sure to hover both sides. L tier, just because the fight started. I want the enemy team to be confused. So now I don't have my ult, which kind of sucks. But I feel like I had to ult. Such a tricky fight. Everyone is scared to go in at this point in the game. Nobody wants to lose the game for their team. They get the dragon here because it was just so hard to walk into Rel. That's okay because we have the better position on Baron. Now I have my ult back. I'm waiting to see Kaisa. There we go. Managed to get them all. We killed enough people, we just have to defend the wave. Rise dies, but I think we have plenty of time to end the game. I just press E on the volley bear so he gets feared. And we end the game. Hope you guys enjoyed. This was a high challenger or like mid to high challenger game on NA. And I hope you learned something. And I will be uploading more videos like this soon. And hopefully more coaching sessions. I'm going to start doing coaching again. So if you're interested in getting coached for $35, join my Discord in the description. And uh, DM me on Discord. Thanks for watching.